Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, another meeting of the Open Network Security Monitor Group at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And today's meeting will be a project meeting, so we will get started working on the things that we have on our task list, such as the Contain NSM project and the DACU malware container analysis project, among others, if anybody's interested in those. So let's go ahead and get started through the meeting notes here. Get it up on the screen, go right into the group updates. And just a tad bit bigger. So updates on the Amazon AWS credits. We still do not know the amount, but it will be pl applied in two days. So on the 24th, we'll have those credits available. And again, um, we were told around seven to 8,000, but they put in a recommendations for 35, I believe it was, it was above 30. So hopefully we get that recommendation. Hopefully that was accepted. That'd be awesome because that would give us a lot of uh, stuff to play with, a lot of credits to code infrastructure. Also, last week I released on the NSM course uh, two videos on writing your own Bro Analyzer. So uh, this, they're draft videos. So if you want to watch them, please do give me feedback. I know some of the length or the lingo used on bin pack is actually incorrect. I need to do more research on it. But for the most part, we build a Analyzer live for the RIP protocol, the routing internet protocol. And I just I go through the whole thing, starting with the using Vlad's templates, um, and then moving on to, in the second video, uh, how to work that analyzer into data that is represented in script land. So you can actually pull out the version number, for example, or the type of the RIP packet, whether it's a request or reply. And in that video also, like I said, I do it live, so you'll see me like going through the RFC, finding out what fields I need to parse out, et cetera. So do check that out and give us feedback. We run right along to the meeting sections. Yeah, I have some questions popped up in the chat there. Okay, uh, did, you, did, you, did you read them? Uh, I, I didn't get to see the whole thing. Okay, we'll get to it. Well, I didn't mean to email you. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, networking news. So a few articles that came out, a covert man on the side attack from NetResSec, the guys that do Network Miner and other really cool forensic analysis tools on the network. They came out with this uh, article on um, basically as a response to what was the NSA's uh, quantum insert attack. You can see that they give a little uh, definition of it and why uh, tools like Suricata in the past were not able to detect it based on the way that the sessions were created and torn down. But the idea here, the man, man on the side, is that um, for doing a revisit the quantum insert, there's, an, there's a request, and uh, what happens is, since they are, the NSA and other organizations typically have visibility that other people would not have, they are able to guess the right TCP sequence number and respond before the actual legitimate web server, therefore injecting some sort of payload that the client would then interpret. In the case of HTTP, they could inject a different page or a redirect or something that, that would cause the client to go to something different rather than what it was intended to go to if they talked to the legitimate server. Because the NSA could respond very quickly because of the points that they have visibility on in the network. So this basically breaks that down and goes on the technical detail, or de uh, details of it with the uh, various flags and why sort of conduct cannot detect. And I have not read, read this article yet. I was going to today, but I highly recommend checking it out. I will do, do so later. The other article we have uh, was something we talked about a little bit last week on the malicious uh, backdoors in the Cisco routers. Take a look at that. There was, there was uh, a number of them found on... Uh, different routers having back doors, and they have the groups here by the countries that had the infected routers. You can see that we had the most, and then there's a number of other countries that had less. So um, they seem to be uh, clandestine attacks and related, potentially related to the sinful knock router implant that is then discussed in the next article. But then again, I apologize, I, did not have to, I didn't have time to read any of these, so you'll have to check them out for yourself. But FireEye, um, did, did a blog post on the sinful knock for the Cisco router implant. So do check this out and see how they were doing it. Um, looks pretty technical, I already like it. Um, TLB, rewrite tributes. 
how they got the malware on there, analysis of the malware. And this looks like a really good read. So if I do um, read it for the next meeting, I'll try to present on it and just talk a little bit about it, but I haven't had a chance. Did anybody else have a chance to read any of these articles and want to uh, review them? No. Close out of those. So conference quarter. Um, DerbyCon is this week. I believe it starts tomorrow. I will be speaking there on uh, Islet. So if anybody is going to be at DerbyCon, um, please uh, reach out to me. You can hang out or something. Also, the week after is Ohio Linux Fest, which many of us in this room will be attending. And I will give a talk on Islet, and John uh, is going to give a talk on Jekyll, and Mike, who's on remote attendance, is going to give a talk on uh, Vagrant and Ansible provisioning. So we got three people from, from our groups uh, giving talks this year, which is really cool. But do check that out. Um, on the tool trade section, Brandon, had, who's, on the, who's on the remote call right now, actually um, wrote this tool to help us to help his team take a look at uh, basically analyze uh, PCAS with different tools that were container. I was going to let him talk about that. Hey, Brandon, do you want me to give you screen sharing? Do you want to share your screen? Uh, yeah, that that will work fine. Let me, um, okay, if you click uh, share screen, I think it should be a green button. Yep, I got it. Cool. Excellent. You guys can see that? Yes. Can you make the font oh. bigger? Yep. How's that? It looks good. Thank you. Okay. Cool. No problem, man. So, uh, like John was saying, um, I created this <clears throat> quick little tool uh, to help out some guys that I work with. Really, uh, a lot of times we'll have a PCAP that we've been able to collect out of our environment, and uh, you know, either it didn't reap, you know, like uh, it wasn't detected quite right, or maybe it, we thought a signature should have fired but didn't, and so we, we found ourselves having to replay PCAPs. Um, multiple times and sometimes it was useful to replay it you know if we captured it with snort um, in our environment it was helpful to replay that pcap through suricata or through bro or some of the other nsm tools and uh, so it's kind of funny when we started talking about the the contain nsm effort it kind of aligned itself pretty well with what i had done um, i had had a lot of problems with trying to install multiple versions of snort as well as very specific versions of snort dependencies that replicated our production environment um, and then putting suricata on top of that and sometimes it has the same dependencies and it just became really uh, complicated to do it within a single VM that I could hand out to multiple people and so then I started okay well I'll create a bunch of VMs and and now I've got a bunch of VMs to hand out to people and it just wasn't working very well and and uh, so I was down at the um, B-Sides Iowa, and some guy gave a, a quick talk about Docker and how awesome it was. And I was like, wow, that, that really solves this problem where people can just pull down these images. I can create quick little scripts to, that kind of wrap themselves around those Docker uh, containers, and away we go. And so this little effort was, was born out of that. Um, so one of the problems that I first wanted to solve was, like, it's great to provide a container that has Snort installed on it. Um, but really installing Snort's like, it's a barrier to entry to start playing around with Snort. But once you get policy management um, and how to create Snort config files and how to include all of that stuff was really problematic for a barrier to entry. And so I kind of dealt with that as well. Um, so I'll kind of get into the tool. Um, there are some particular directories uh, that are important, uh, but they're pretty self-explanatory. So um, you put your PCAPs in the PCAPs directory, and uh, you can make your own policies in the policies directory. And right now it's based, uh, you have a policy for each IDS engine that you can run right now, only Snort and Suricata. But so if you go into Snort, you can see that I've got multiple rule sets here. And it's the same thing for Suricata. And so you just kind of build out your different policies for your different IDS engines under policy. Um, and you can put lots of PCAPs in the PCAPs folder. So the logs directory is uh, the same way. Uh, but the logs are populated when the engines actually run. So we'll do that real quick. 
Um, so my buddy uh, who I work with, his name's Philip. He actually just committed a um, this run engine Python, which is a Python version of my really bad Bash script that does the same thing. Uh, but we'll use his because he's a cool guy. Um, so all we tell it, you can tell it uh, by default. You can just tell it to run a pcap, and so it goes out and looks for that pcap in the pcaps folder, and does Docker and does magic to map all of the the policies, the pcap, and the logs into the Docker container. Um, so that way you can read all of that from the from the host. Um, so by default, it, the Python script provides some defaults. It's going to run snort, um, and so we do that real quick. Sorry. And so it started up the Docker container here. It's loading up snort. And so Snort reads the PCAP real quick. Uh, this test PCAP that's provided is actually from Brad uh, Duncan, uh, who does the malware analysis or malware traffic analysis.net site. He, was, he talked uh, to this group previously. And uh, I just pulled down one of his PCAPs and dropped it in there. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it does crypto wall or something. We'll find out. Uh, so now that Snort's done, you know, you can roll back through the history here and, and read what you need to read. Uh, of course, Docker's got its Docker logs that logs all the standard out. Um, but all the IDS alerts are going to go into logs. And so now if we go in here, we can see that we've got the snort. And then we've got a timestamp and the PCAP that was written as a, uh, the PCAP that was read as a unique identifier that contains those logs for that run of that PCAP. So if we come into that... Uh, then we can see the actual snort logs. So, uh, so there's the logs. Um, so you can take that same PCAP, run it across Suricata, and it does the same thing. Um, and that's more or less it. Uh, very cool. Thanks for sharing that. So yeah, when I was whenever I was thinking about doing the container and the sale, I really wasn't even thinking about like all the configuration possibilities. I think since you re reached out to me, it kind of opened my mind up a little bit to say, wow, we could really make this even more um, versatile than just a training. Because training was my original idea. Just to let people to pull down a tool, try it out, like a student, for example, who has no prior knowledge touching the tools, and then kind of go over the output with them. But for analysts and stuff, you know, if we can have set, we can actually create separate different like policies that are common with different settings and stuff, like you have in the policies directory, and write like a front end, like your your your, uh, your run engine. Um, we could actually do this very well across all the different tools and check out all kinds of analysis. I think that's actually very powerful. So, yeah, I think um, yeah, this is definitely a motivator. Motivator, I think, to uh, just kind of explore all the ways that we can run these tools. Yeah, sure. and. You know, from an analyst's perspective, there's no one tool that will give you all the answers that you want to ask while doing an investigation. And uh, so, you know, there are many cases where I want to just parse out all of the DNS requests and Suricata or Bro are really great for that. Um, but there are other cases where I don't need to ask that question. Uh, there are other ones where I just want to see all of the, all of the HTTP requests in this and T-Shark's really good for that. Um, so yeah, it'd, it'd be awesome to be able to build kind of a wrapper around all of those tools. So that way you can say, go do this. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I think we're going to work on that though. I'm definitely putting that on. Cool. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that, man. No problem. All right. Okay. So, um, that concludes the, uh, the uh, notes we have for today. So today is, again, a project meeting. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stop talking unless there's questions, and then we're just going to start working on things. So we have two projects, again, um, that are, we are, I guess, kind of prioritizing that we can do in a classroom setting. That is Contain NSM, and that is Docu, the malware container analysis. So for everybody that's on the call, if you need help getting started with one, do ask in chat or just unmute your mic and ask, and I can help you guide you through getting started. Um, if you have just want to, want to have your own discussions, feel free to, to talk among yourselves or in the chat, and we'll just kind of get started. I'm going to begin working on a, snort, a new sort image to test mics out, uh, to tr try to apply a new version, and then I'm going to, myself, then I'm going to, have, after I do that, whether you know, 10 minutes into that, I'm going to start working on the malware container project and start to look at the Docker API. So, um. Hey, Shep. 
Yes. yes. I'm actually already on that. Say again? Yeah. I'm actually already on uh, getting a new container version up and running. You said, you, I'm sorry, so I still couldn't hear you. I'm already on that process, getting the new oh. container up and running. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, let me know how it goes. And let, I might think, let you do that then if you just want to work on that and I'll um, work on something else like the container. Yeah, project. so finding versions older than uh, two older versions might be an issue. So it looks like they don't host uh, older versions on their website. Yeah. The source only really has the last two. So. Yeah, that annoys me so much. Uh, I really wish they put it all in a directory list and then you can put it down. So yeah. Also, like, if I, I'll get these two, two done and I'll look some more. Yeah, I, I know. I wonder how awful or how many Source Forge has. But I hate downloading for them. Their URL structure blows. And uh, uh, Their documentation says they only have the uh, the last oldest version. Okay. Um, but it looks like I may be able to find two on there. So we'll see what happens. I'll get these done and I'll look further. All right, sounds good. I'm going to hit one of the lights in the room and then uh, kind of do our own thing. And feel free, if anybody wants to talk about anything that's not related to go on, we just, it's just free time to work on stuff. If you need help with Docker, um, any of the tools related to that, let me know. We'll get you started. John, is there a Trello roadmap for the other project? For uh, Container SM? Yes. Nope, not yet. I, uh, I did put a link to the the one that we're using for Daku in the, the Slack channel, Daku. There's okay. the link there, and if you sign up for Trello if you're interested in helping out with that project. Well, I don't know if you can hear me from that. Can you guys hear uh, Mike or uh, Shane talking? Hi, Shane. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So Shane said that he put the uh, the link to the Trello inside the Docu um, chatter on the or on the Docu channel on our Slack group. Is that correct, Shane? Yes. Okay. And there it is, right there. You click on that link, and then that will show you the roadmap. So basically, we're using Trello, um, which is recommended by John Clem sitting next to me to actually kind of organize and uh, show what we're working on. So you can drag a board here if you if you know that you're ready to create the server environment and if that's in progress, you can move it to different things. If, you, if, you're, some, if you're blocking on something, like the work of another person, you move to that, bug reports, Q&A, and then done. It's just a it way should, to do project management. It should be noted that the uh, parentheses numbers, we're using a uh, we're using a plugin, which we can provide the link for, uh, allows you to document the estimated hours and the completed hours. Uh, the, the goal, of course, is we're trying to determine the uh, we're trying to determine the velocity that we're, we're doing this, and, and it actually generates uh, burn down charts and everything if you have the plugin installed. Now, I don't know if I have access to adding people to the team anymore. Now that this is done, are you a certified scrum master? No, I listened to an audio book on it though. So, okay. Oof. yeah. You can like pay money to be all certified. Apparently, yeah. There's there's like companies dedicated to. Uh, For some reason, that certified seems to be associated with like pay money. Yes. Yeah. Shane, you're an admin now. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I was looking to try to add. Um, if anybody else wants to, let us know. We'll get you uh, admin access. All right. So I'm gonna get started. I may turn off my um, screen sharing. I don't know yet. We'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna get Python Docker API. I'm sorry, stop talking. Oh, I'm glad it said it's private, so we need to make this easy for people to find and add themselves to. Yeah, how to make it public? public. How do you make it public? What's that? The uh, board. Yeah. Oh, is the board's private? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which one? The Joku? Um, so look, now you see where it says, well, do you see where it says team visible? Yes. And now below, can you switch that right there? Ah, perfect. All right, it's now public. And I signed up to nothing. <laughs> Wouldn't you still need to be 
signed up to get it added to the workflow. I mean, you post that in the um, chat. If you want to actually help out, you can install that plugin too. So we'll see what you see right now. Ah. Hey, uh, Mike, did you see that link that uh, Brandon posted in the channel about the snore old stuff that you shouldn't use? Yeah, I replied to it. Okay, sorry, I'm just now checking the chat. So. No problem. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I stop jumping around and I'll put the, um, is that? Okay, well, it seems that there's the API client if, uh, is docker pi. That's the one done by the Docker people. So for those working on that, post it in chat. Hold that down and check it out.
Are you sharing to me? Well, it's picture. This is like it's a All right, so as everybody knows, I'm working on the uh, container creation in code. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Oh, dang it, Devin did upload his um, API stuff. He did? Did not. You know, he said move ahead. Yeah, move ahead. If you need something to work on, let me. Is the repo already created? Yeah. Posting a chat. See, you see that reference in the resources. That's what I should go to. So one of us can work on uh, do a work on parsing the old files or some or JSON JSON. So we have a config file that's kind of do a work so we can yeah Python. So just be like uh, yep um, be able to. Name equals the container name, you know, CPU equals so all of the common Docker settings to be able to pull that in um, from, the, from the file. You might be able to, all, might be able to already do that with the API, but I'm kind of anxious. So, hmm? or if you want, uh, we really need like the starting the design of the uh, web stuff.
So, do you want to go through some discussion? So, yep. so what's the difference between this and using this? Oh, we have it. Did you see this page? Yeah, it's on there. Yeah, because it's not we have the error package. So with that, we just make H. Well, hold on. I think the originally H is the request, right? So the idea is you have a command line tool or something, even are there whether it makes a it makes the backend request to yeah to create the container. And it makes the request to create the, okay. So, so it does all the work, but the web yeah. interface would, fall, would do, um, yeah, the web interface is going to expose an API that's simple, like yeah, actually. or dot com slash create slash container name, right? So just, just to, for example, and then on the back end, there would something to be the in bottle would match that request and then it actually make the proper request for um, the Docker API. I am a little confused now because I don't know if we should use this one or that one or what is the difference. So I'm going to try to investigate it. So I feel like that thing that you're it's based off of this description, that thing that you're trying to make sure you send the whole email for it. I don't feel like So, so um, I guess we, we don't need to have multiple things. So we just need to have a, so we're, we're going to use to have a command language tool and then a, a web interface. So we'll be able to this container, this container, this container. So we so right? Right, right. And that'll, that'll be presented in the web interface. The command line tool would have to be it too. So is there a way to get both tools to use the same thing, just different? What is the best way to do that? So I was just thinking, like, there's like a unified API. Command line tool makes a request to this. Look right here. Command line tool makes a request to this. This actually does the Docker container creation. Web interface makes a request to this. This actually does Docker creation. So there's just all you really need is the central piece. That's kind of how I see it. I don't know if you have a better idea of design, but that's kind of how I see it. Um, you would do be able, all the same things you can do with the web interface. Okay. You want to be able to make it so analysts can use it directly. It'll, it'll be able to use.
So we still want to be able to define the sign of the Yeah, so, so the middleware, the, what I would call the all the work is done is we'll have access to the drinker. Right? I'll know that either of these can take calls. I need to monitor them for neighbors. And then when the client makes the request to that, that middle piece, the middle piece returns the latest update and instead of things that we use. Like, there's a new image head for XYZ SM tool. So we can have this as a sign of the not really there's a distortion I don't have it. Can you send it to me? Thank you. You don't do it right now, I'm just saying yes. yes. Alright. So we have this, right? And then over here we have Let's see. Okay. So, uh, we're going to know. So, how do you want to do these pin guys in the bottom? Then, the Dante is going to wear the read side on. I wonder if my mic was on this. Clem and I are working up a diagram for how they should work. So apparently that needs to be done first. Clearly, um, and Clem's uh, diagram of what now? How the system should look, the architecture. System. Architecture of what? I think I missed that. The uh, the architecture of the Doku um, software. Okay, got you. Thanks. So we just like getting ready to, just to start right now over here. We're like, wait a second, something's something's uh, aren't making sense already. So he's over here designing it, and we'll share with the group when it's done. Thanks. Is anybody working on our projects? Just curious if anyone else is uh, working on anything specific. Learning how to build Docker images because that's very specific. Oh, let, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's a good start. If I talk about the boxes there, it still isn't really working. Okay. So, it's still good. so this is the status. Zero status. Um, the longest process of this is actually building the snort containers to test. Say again? I was saying the longest part of this is actually building the containers to test. Takes uh, quite a few minutes to build a snort container. Right. Well, until we get it there. No, well, um, I think they're both because we're going to need containers for this one. Were, were you specifically talking about a project, uh, the container sim, or are you talking about for uh, images for uh, both of them? Oh, I was talking about the snort containers that I'm building. Oh, okay. I think if we were to build them just to test, I mean, changing the files and taking them at all. I want to test them all before I commit it. So. We don't have snort in our malware tool, but um, because it makes network requests, you want to be able to see what the signatures match. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, like whenever we have the infrastructure, we can dish out like hopefully 16 core machines to each other so that we can start cranking on building those. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. I, I, I did it so many of them, it took me forever. On my laptop. All right. So, um, we're a doctor. And this is okay. This is our box, right? Yeah. So, um, um, one that eight. So one, so one thing that's interesting, I don't remember system D being on this install, this might be a mistake. Um, which is not a problem, I just, I don't, I'm not too familiar with it. Um, so let's do this again. What the arrows are that claimed on key. So let's actually remove it and hope that maybe Walker will generate it. <coughs> You like that? Uh, actually, actually, uh, this is a pretty sweet website. Uh, ASCII flow. Yeah, A S S K E Y F L O U E. See what I did there? <laughs> That's what I was trying to say in words. When you got it. I'm just going to do all the questions. So, have we, what, what do you guys know? Have we, uh, have we defined like the uh, way we're going to interact with this thing? Or does, does my question make any sense as they very rarely do? Um, I 
by interaction, you mean the users interact with it? Yeah. Well, and then I'm including like the config file stuff in there. So I'm assuming though, after we, so if we skip a couple steps there, we've already defined the Docker images and we've somehow set up all the Docker containers. Well, once we're trying to run stuff inside of a container, would, would there need to be instructions for that other than are we just gonna do a Docker CP and put it inside the container and then execute it inside the container? That's what I was thinking. So you don't see any use cases where it may be like, well, instead we're gonna do something other than that. I'm just trying to think of like what the config file should look like or. So I think the, the config, I think will be separate. Uh, I was thinking that the user, would be an option in the, so you run the command line, so we'll say it's Docker. Docu dash dash six source or dash dash malware, and you specify the file name of the malware, and then use whatever options to run your various uh, images. It will read those configs, and the API will spot up those containers. It will copy that malware file that you pass as the source, right, or the, the file to the, each container. It will run them in parallel concurrently, and then it will be able to uh, capture the results and store it somewhere for, that, for the actual. Um, a review essentially. So that would be. Oh, go ahead. Not a lot of time left. That's cool. You done? It looks like that's actually working. Um, unless I'm sure there are a lot of seconds. I think there's a problem with the one to the Does anybody have any free hands about the right now? That has experience with uh, VirtualBox. Was well, anybody used our bigger config on Windows yet? Okay. Oh, you're right. Yeah, those are some sweet Thanks. John, um, does it say you that you can have uh, anything push to the doctor? Does VirtualBox work well on Mac? I've never had a problem. It's really bad on everything else. It's a little bit when I used it on Mac a little bit, but Honestly, I used it hard enough to tell it to be able to tell it. We've been using it a lot on most of the 8.1 and 9.10 Windows, especially. It's, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. It works. Like, really slow. And just compared to the other. And it still works. Yeah, VMware is. Yeah, I'd probably stick with virtual boss if VMO wasn't offered for us. I can't remember. I think I found VMO best in prison. What's it? What's it? VMO best in prison. Was it not that I have it much in this? Okay, so we're going to do what we're going to do with the And then we're going to try using this to play five in the morning. I'm hoping this one, I'm going to use this to do it before it's not average. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're going to do it before it's not average. I, mean, I don't know. I, don't, I honestly have no idea how that one's any different to mine. Yeah, yeah. Unless I did not test it and I thought I did. That's possible, but I made a mistake. Um, so, uh, go back. Actually, here's one grandma. Do you have the directory where you type big or nothing? Okay. You know? So, okay, open up your console. Uh, you see that the shell. Uh, I mean, well, command prompt is essentially. And then go in that directory and type vagrant destroy. Because that will. Um, the vagrant keyboard number 22. You can't. You can't? You can't pay for it. I'm not. Yeah. 
Okay, so it's committed. Um, if you're on Mac though, OS 10, I highly recommend doing um, the Docker, um, what was the, the new name for it? Uh, let me look. Toolbox, Toolbox, yeah. Docker Toolbox. That's what I'm using. So you can run it directly, the Docker client directly on your own, on your own, on your own, on your OS 10. So there's just. There's Oh, I understand. If you, if you just Google uh, Docker and OSX, it should come up with your password. So is, it, is there something new from the Docker? Yeah, I think it's kind of I think it's considered sort of more recent than Google Docker. It's, it looks like it might be. Oh, I think it is. So I, I know Google Docker was using virtual cloud native. Oh, actually, this, this doesn't seem to be. I mean, it seems to have kind of its own. Um, so you you want, like a, it wants to select it wants to select it wants to Okay, so it seems to be, I mean, um, I'm, I'm admittedly still figuring it out, but it, it seems that it's, I was able to get stuff up and running um, without having to use, without having to have a separate virtual box. So when you do port mapping, does it yeah. actually map to the to your Mac? Because I know that's one thing that always trips me up on the doctor. Yeah. yeah. What happens is it's you know, VM in the background with Vagrant, and you don't even know about it. You handle all the command line. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It, it does, so it does use virtual box. If you oh, do a port, virtual box. Yeah, so if you map the host port, right, it's not actually mapping to your Mac. Uh, the Mac host port, right? That makes any sense. For, for, for what? Can't bring right now. Uh, so like one of the things that always messing up with moving out here, right? If you're if you're mapping ports, right? That instead there was that virtual box shenanigans in the middle there. So, like, you couldn't say you couldn't access like your Mac's IP address or it's, it's, it's actual network IP address or whatever. Right. right. Respect to, yeah, 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 it's still right. that way, right? With you, you can modify the bigger file. I don't know what we're doing, but you guys need to do the original. So, what's the difference between the Docker and the Docker's toolbox? Toolbox superseded uh, Ubuntu Docker. So it's which Docker is considered old, yeah. Yeah. and they redid the whole thing with the toolbox. Honestly, I think it was a markup thing just to make it sound better. Docker toolbox, but Docker toolbox consists of Vagrant, VirtualBox, the Docker client, and use some other stuff all together. Yeah, everything like Docker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much everything is. Yeah. 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 Now they did. So now it's just more shenanigans. So now there is Yeah, it's basically So now type vagrant space status. grill. Tech bigger in space, global bar on that status. We should just delete that. So, we'll be at the board. Y'all say maze. It's not tech bigger enough. That's going to bring us review. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do this before? Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. So now you should have one. You have to do it. Hopefully, we have one. What's that? Are you at? Yes. You look delicious. Put it on that way. Okay. Put on the diagram. Do you know it's been done? And uh, we moved on to uh, describing how this is very shitty. How these shenanigans are going to work. But it's usually time for like four minutes. Wait. What's the terms of 10 30? No. No, I think you're mistaken. Huh? I think you're mistaken. Yeah.
I guess it may be the name of the call for you to do that to show you how the output or the output. Three machines in the call for the market. It should remain. Um, unless the config. Oh, it says the machine already did it. Are you coming? The shipper? Okay, so I think that's pretty Hey guys, it's Brandon. Thanks for having me. I'm going to head out. Okay, good. Thanks for Take care. Me. Take care, guys. So uh, this is what Clem came up with here. Um, so the, pretty. Uh, ASCII diagram we have. So we'll have some sort of... It's a JPEG of an ASCII diagram. Oh, it's a PNG of an ASCII diagram. So we have this doctor middleware yeah. that the command line tool and the web interface will talk to. This middleware will then read from the configuration files up here that tells it what images to load to make meta container for analysis. And then um, Docker middleware will then send those results or make the request to Docker to create containers of the images specified with the options for these configurations. So this simplifies all of it, I think. This is uh, tentative, by the way, too. Okay. Okay. If anybody sees any design problems with this, let me know. Um, no, I was helping you. Okay. So we're waiting on people. Oh, that's okay. Um, because it's it's like. It's not like, because I actually wanted to be able to get to do operational stuff by working at it and doing some, some like, tools, some programming that makes it. Um, yeah, right. uh, I really like that. You got 60 seconds. Yeah, we're we're the, the board. Yeah, that's it's, it's, it, you know, it, was, it seemed like the, the Elasticsearch database could be kind of expensive for performance wise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just sold someone wide. I've never heard of them. 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 I don't know. Maybe you can get some more power. Like, more. Hopefully, you come back and that works. Do you have any problems? Stop the other thing. The little snake. Yes. Can you do any speed tricks on it? Nice. Nice. That's a really good one. Did you just follow it? Well, like, I mean, actually, when I had Oshibite, 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 I had